Hello, and welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. A little bit of a bonus today because I have uh, some extra time. I was a little ahead um, last night and got my um, past masters out. So I've had this redo sitting in the folder, and um, it's called Dawn Path. It's an 8x8, eight eight. and uh, it's, not, it's not a terrible painting. Um, you saw I hit it with the uh, glaze. If you blinked, you missed it. But um, the glaze was burnt sienna. And um, also, you know, yesterday I talked about raising the tree line uh, in another painting. And um, you can see I'm doing that here. And it's already really, really helping it. The amount of, and, uh, like I said yesterday, you can't always. There's no hard and fast rule how close or far uh, trees should be away from the top of the painting, but um, one thing that I've developed over the five years since I probably did this um, this painting is is knowing that that was not not close enough. <laughs> so I mean, experience has been the best teacher there. Um, other than that, the painting had a nice kind of uh, fractured uh, quality that I have always liked, but um, it was probably one pass too. I don't think I did a lot of secondary work in it. I always kind of liked the quality it had, even though I had some issues with it. And the scene is um, actually probably based on a scene from England. The giveaway is always these these uh, these trees overgrowing the road. There is some of that out here in New Zealand, but not a heck of a lot of it. And uh, this particular scene, uh, I, I took quite a few photographs. Oh my goodness, this is probably back in 2011 or 12 or something like that. And um, I painted vari variations of the scene many times. So I um, wish I could get back there and get even more photos because just the kind of thing I love. I love the grouping and I love the interest is created by the the trees overgrowing the road and sort of creating a little arch. Um, I just find that interesting, sort of fascinating. I will say uh, with the glazing though, burnt sienna, you know, is a great way to go if you want to go for a toneless sort of effect. However, it will have a very darkening effect on your painting and uh, I've run into a bit of that with the show I've got going on right now. It's like a lot of people wonder why the paintings are so dark and honestly I don't even see them as dark myself. I think I've just ingrained the toneless mindset so deeply that I don't actually see it until people ask me why is this a dark and it's it's as dark as it needs to be you know that's how I feel about it but a lot of that, uh, I've been thinking about that for the last uh, couple days, um, and it occurred to me that uh, it's just ingrained tonalism. It, uh, all of these master studies I've done, I'm very much working in the same sort of scale as far as color goes, and it's just been internalized for me. And I have to say, if you go to like the Louvre, I mean, it's been a while since I've been at the Louvre, but you'd be amazed how dark all of those paintings are you know by modern standards and the thing is that um, people uh, in the the modern age have uh, really become accustomed to this sort of impressionist uh, color scale which is up in a much higher key than tonalism and uh, I'm not dissing it I mean I love plenty of paintings that are light and bright and uh, if I if I concentrated and made a point I'm sure I could do a light and bright painting myself but I'm working uh, in a way in a mode that's comfortable with who I am as a person and the sort of landscape art that I like so um, and I think actually that could be one of the the reasons why you know I don't have 6,000 subscribers you know um, and that's actually it's perfectly fine with me because I think it's better to just be true to yourself as an artist and sometimes that could take um, a bit of searching and a bit of experimentation uh, to discover and uh, especially even more so if you were a commercial artist like I was for 13 years and for most of my life as an artist I was quite content just to work with technique and uh, skill as far as rendering and um, I wasn't that uh, fussed with um, subject matter I mean there's things I like to draw and things I didn't like to draw I never I particularly like to draw things like cars or buildings. Um, always 
people and um, and I've always had a bit of an affinity for the landscape but it wasn't until I settled on landscape painting as the uh, mode of operation that I was going to pursue as an artist that um, I really began my journey in earnest and um, when I started out <clears throat> I wasn't painting in a toneless way I was painting in a more impressionist way but once I discovered like Georgia Ness um, it was pretty much all over because that's what resonated with me at the deepest level and I looked at that stuff and I go why isn't why is anyone doing anything like this anymore this is <coughs> so much better than most of what's going on you know uh, <laughs> that's how I feel that's what I think you know that's not necessarily the zeitgeist of the population in general but yeah who cares really you know, let's face it, art is not something that has to um, exist uh, for any other reason than people want it to exist. You know, people want to have art around. And a lot of people, most people, do not even care about art, uh, even a little. Maybe they care about it to the extent of, uh, that's a cool tattoo, or wow, that's a bitchin' t-shirt, dude, you know? that kind of thing and I think people actually do have an affinity and love for art uh, at that level or scale but when you're talking about the fine art and um, the, the sort of art that, cre that develops and creates f the finer sentiments in human consciousness uh, yeah most people just really don't care and that's okay we, a lot of in a lot of cases it's a function of education if you don't have a natural inclination towards this sort of art you know you're probably just going to see it as something a bit alien and uh, like I said I've run into this for years I have a publicly um, uh, publicly uh, accessible studio and uh, a lot of people may not even come in just because they really don't know what to make of what I do and uh, but the people that do come in a lot of them they love it and uh, I've had some people uh, come in to uh, visit the quarry just because of my show and um, you know told me they love my work and etc cetera, etc cetera. and I always appreciate that sort of comment um, on the other hand you can't get too tied into that especially if you're working in a mode that's not exactly the mainstream it really can't be it's almost like you know uh, I'm a, if I was an accordion player, I'd be playing polkas, you know, I wouldn't be playing rock and roll, actually, even to play an accordion, <laughs> who plays rock and roll on an accordion, but <laughs> maybe uh, that's a bad metaphor, I don't know, anyway, hey, we're getting kind of close to the end, hopefully you enjoyed uh, seeing my little uh, revision here, and uh, it's a nice warm little painting, very cozy and rich, and uh, I'm quite happy with it, um, Hopefully Doug sawing, uh, Doug seeing my process, and I uh, got something out of it. Um, new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I will keep the content coming. Uh, old subscribers, you know I'm going to keep the content coming because I always have. And unless some uh, something comes along to knock me off my path, I intend to keep going for quite a while. So, thanks for sticking around, and um, you know. Uh, going along with me for a ways on my journey as a painter. I will be back with another video. Probably be a little, well, I don't know. It could be. A, uh, I like to, I start thinking about something usually around Wednesday or Thursday. Today's Sunday, uh, July 8th, 2018, by the way. But I will be back with another video, probably about the time you start missing me. And uh, until then, please take good care and stay out of trouble. <laughs>